I'm Sam Moon. I'm a senior industrial designer here at M3 Design. I am Eric Deal. I'm a senior mechanical engineer at M3 Design. Uh, well, hospital credentialing is a credentialing service that essentially gives you permission to you know, enter a, a hospital or a healthcare facility. Um, you know, think of it as a, you know, a badge uh, that you wear and it says that you're allowed to be there. The real reason for credentialing is to limit the number of non-healthcare professionals in a facility. Yeah, it's a barrier to entry, basically. So, you know, yeah, like you said, not anybody can just wander in there and end up in the OR. Right. So first thing you got to do is figure out which which credentialing service you need, which is based off of the facility that you're going to go into. So. Uh, you know, in the case of our client, we would work with their reps to figure out which facilities are good uh, candidates for research. And then from there, they would, you know, tell us which uh, credentialing service is required to get in there. So that's kind of how you have to do that. And in some cases, uh, it requires multiple credentials because not every facility has the same one. Um, so that can make the process even longer. Uh, and they have different requirements, right? Yeah, it's yeah. so odd. You know, one credentialing service, you've got to take, you know, like 16 classes and, you know, all these things. And then other ones, it's completely different. If you take like two classes, sign a couple of forms and, you know, that's that's all it takes. Yeah. So there's not really a lot of consistency. It's really no. strange. Yeah, especially with the vaccines and stuff. Some of them require right. different ones. Some of them are, don't require as many. Um, so that can be a bit frustrating when you're like, doing something specifically just to get one, just to go into one facility. And then after you get all your vaccines, you go on the portal for the credential and you take a bunch of classes. Mm -hmm. uh, some of which I would say in our case, you know, are necessary, like the bloodborne pathogens mm -hmm. uh, courses, like what do you do in the OR? How do you maintain sterility? All those kinds of things are super important. But then there's some other stuff like Sunshine Act stuff and, uh, you know, there are just other things where it's like, if you're in there every day, I could see why this would be important. But if you're going into a facility in a research capacity, you know, just to observe something or ask somebody some questions, it's kind of like, I really need this. Uh, all all told, it could take you over a month to get through all the shots, yeah. the courses, the, oh, they didn't accept this. I got to go back to my doctor and get a different form. So you got to you gotta leave yourself some time. Especially if you're trying to like actually do work while you're doing this, you know, so. Uh, you're splitting that with like what planning re the research trips and stuff like that. So um, that drags it out even further. Getting credential is necessary, uh, particularly for us working so much in the med tech industry to be able to actually go in and do ethnographic research. Uh, you know, you could argue you could bring some people into a conference room or into like a Schlesinger type, like two-way mirror situation and you know, bring them some stuff and see what they do. But it's not accurate to the real environment, you know, where things are stored, if things are really tight and condensed. Uh, if it's an emergent situation where somebody's under a ton of pressure, um, you, know, you just don't get the same sense of how people use things in real life unless you're actually there to see it. Um, cause human beings respond to pressure, right? We act differently when yeah. we're under pressure and it's just hard to replicate that when you're not in the medical facility. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the big rules of doing, you know, design research is like, don't, you can listen to what people say, but you really have to pay attention to what they actually do. Um, so especially in like those interview type environments, People will say a lot of things, but it's more useful to be able to actually like go in, observe things and see what they really do. And then you can kind of compare it to what they say and, and suss out the truth. Uh, but being able to actually go there, be a fly on the wall, look at what's really happening and make your own observations, um, it is extremely useful. Would you describe Sam? I, I knew we, we, we spent a lot of time uh, doing a lot of planning, creating discussion guides, and really sort of you know structuring a visit that and how we want it to go. A lot of times it's expensive to go to these places and it takes a lot of time. So, uh, you know, as a designer, we tend to prepare a lot and then you get to the hospital and what happens? 
Yeah, it never goes the way that you want it to go. Um, you kind of, unlike the hotel room and the conference right. room where things are very controlled and you can be really regimented and ask your perfect question just the way you wanted it in the right order. So I, I feel like one thing we really learned, uh, you know, over the years, the course of designing these these medical devices is being credentialed is is really kind of a critical component of um, you know going through our product development process it's not really an optional thing it's something that that you sort of need to intend that you're going to deal with if you want to you know employ good design processes and so just you know plan on doing it yeah, yeah it's a necessary evil of the re of the research and strategy phase right. uh, and yeah, like you said, you really need to plan for it, you know, so when you're putting a project together, leaving time for that. Right. It's not something that can get done in a day or two, unless you're just more on the maintenance, if you've already got it and you just need right. a couple shots here and there. But uh, if you're starting from scratch, it's time consuming and you need to make sure that your research timeline uh, leaves space for that credentialing to get done. And, you know, you can do other things while you're doing that set up your discussion guides and, you know, plan your trips and things like that. But uh, it's something that takes a fair amount of time and shouldn't be taken for granted. And don't don't leave it for the last minute. Yes. You know, it's plus if you do that, it's stressful. Yeah. <laughs> so usually, you know, leave some, you know, a few weeks at the start of the project to kind of get all that squared away so that you know you're taken care of and, yeah. and you don't need to you know, stress about it at the last second. Yeah.